Today, we're going to talk about the idea of being planted and growing. Planted and growing. Once again, this is all, this entire series is really, uh, it's, a, it's an inward reflection at the beginning. And next week, it's going to be an outward reflection of seeing what God is doing. But this is up to you saying, am I the same when I first received Jesus as I am? Now, 10, 15, 20 years later, am I growing? I'm not asking for you to say, Pastor Larry, I'll probably never be a preacher. But are you growing in some way, shape, or form? Do you see God moving inside of you in such a way that you're willing to to, 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 to take that step? It's scary, Pastor Larry. I've never never led youth. Well, take a step. You're growing, you're learning. This is why we're encouraging everyone to be not only just here on Sundays, and I love Pastor Dash, and we were talking about this um, last week, that that if you just want to just, just, I I don't want you just to survive. I want you to thrive. And we said, you know what just, you know what just surviving is as, as being a believer in Jesus Christ? And this is just, this is just making it to Sunday morning on Sunday. It's, It's coming to church on Sunday mornings, receiving a word. It's going to Bible study on Wednesday nights. Ouch. And it's being part of a life group. If you do those three things, you are just surviving. But to thrive is that that I go to church on Sunday, but on Monday I have my own personal devotions and and time with the Lord. And and then on Tuesday I I share it or I I show that example to my children and talk about Jesus a little bit. Or I've I've identified someone that I want to witness to. And then on Wednesday I come to Bible study. And on Thursday I'm looking forward to serving in some way, shape, or form. Then on Friday I have this devotion that says, God, what have I learned during the weekend? And how can I use that now in my life? And on Saturday you're saying, God, continue to... To pour in me so that on Sunday I could come into the house with thanksgiving yeah. and to his courts with praise. But what happens is that we're so tired. We just made it. Oh, my goodness. And that's fine if that's your story, but is that your story every week? I don't want it to be. I want you guys to come run. No matter what, I made it. We, we uh, in, in, in the group that I'm with, with these guys is, is a saying, help me with this, Bernard. You've survived, you've survived your worst days ever. Think about it. If you're here right now and you say that this has been, yesterday was the worst day of my life, well, guess what? You survived it. Someone say, I survived. You, 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 you've been through a horrible relationship. You were beaten, you were abused, you were taken advantage of, but you made it. Someone say, I survived. God, God wants to let you know that even the worst thing that the enemy threw at you, that you survived. You, you, you made it. And God wants you to grow from it. I say this to myself every day. If you're not learning from the experiences that you've been through, you are not growing. Everything that I've been through, I'm asking God, teach me something about me, not about them. Because we're we quick to point the picture. Oh, Pastor, oh, pastor I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring my wife because I want you to tell her about herself. Sit here. Listen to Pastor Larry. Watch he tell you about you. Go ahead, preach to her, Pastor Larry. No, God, teach me. God, I want to grow. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better teen. I want to be a better senior. I want to be a better servant for you. But it takes growth. But, but we started with this in, in, in Psalms chapter 1. And I'm praying that, that we're saying enough that, that if I say Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, that you, that you automatically, oh, that's, that's the blessed. Blessed, that, that blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. He delights in God's law. Many of us don't delight in law unless you're attorney. And in his law, he meditates day and night. This is it. He's like a tree planted. Some say planted. Planted Planted by by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall also not wither. And what, well, say what, see, read God's word. God is true to his word. If he says it, then it's true. 
And he says, whatever he does shall prosper. If you're touching some things and you're not seeing things prospering, then pray to God and say, God, is it me? Is this my will? Because your world, your world will and your word says that it's, it should prosper. But once again, is it me? Maybe God has told you to do some things and, and you planted that seed. But I love the fact that this week my daughters planted their seeds. The kids got little plants. And I'm going to show you one right now in a second there. But, but, but if you don't water it, if you don't give it sunlight, if you don't give it the things that it needs, it won't grow. Maybe you're touching some things that God wants you to touch, but you're not watering it. With his word, maybe you're not attending to it, giving the things that it needs to, to grow. In the physical, growth is, growth is almost assumed, uh, especially we're talking about seeds and a farmer. A farmer plants a seed, plants a crop, and his assumption, their assumption is to say that that seed is going to grow if I attend to it properly. And I want us to do the same in the spiritual. I'm asking you to plant some things, and I, I want you to trust me. Do you, you guys trust Pastor Larry? Oh, that's only three of you. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right, Dan. That's all right. Just three of them. That's all right. I'm about to another 20 years, I should get another, another four. Do you guys trust Pastor Larry? Amen. Amen. So trust the fact that what you've planted, if you attend to it, if, if, you, if you water it, if you, if you give it the things that it needs, it will grow. The growth process is something that God is connected with, something that God wants us to be about. But sadly, sadly, in, in the lives of many Christians, spiritual growth is not really important. I, I, I want you to see a, a need for growth, a need for growing. I mean, listen, I went as far as today as to wear my green and white. Growth. I, 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 want this, I want this to burn into your memories that when I think of growing, I think of green, I think of healthy. I think of what Pastor Larry told me to do, watering and providing what it needs. I really want you to do that. And, 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 and God, I want healthy growth in my life. Because there is such a thing as unhealthy growth. You guys know that, right? There's such a thing as, as, as unhealthy growth. But, but I want healthy growth. And guess what? I'm not saying that because you attend to it one day. That the next day you'll see a crop of corn, but, but that you're faithful to what God has given you. And that you're attending to what God, and I didn't have the picture, and I forgot, uh, Bernard sent me a picture of, see, we, like I said, we, we want the big house on the hill with the white picket fence and the two and a half kids and the dog. But, but are you willing to learn right now in the two-bedroom apartment with a little patch of grass out back? To attend to that. I, 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 I love the fact that, that my, I see, it seems like my transparency is rubbing off on you guys. And, and Bernard came and showed me a picture. He said, Pastor Larry, you know what? I, um, you know, a couple of years ago, he said, actually, before, because we, we did this play the series two, two and a half years ago. And, and, um, and, and you know what? You, you, you hit me there. And I said, God, how can I ask for something more from God? And I'm not even taking care of the... He said, I didn't ask this. He said this. And he showed me a picture of his back lawn, a little section of grass, no, no longer than this, had a little shed on it, but it was brown. It was beetle. I wish I had the picture. I'll bring it next week and show you. And then he showed me a picture now, two years later. He said, I asked God, show me how to take care of the lawn, what to do, and, 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 how, and how I can get this thing to grow. And two years later, it's a, it looks like a totally different picture because he cared for it. And he asked God for the insight on what I needed to do for this thing to grow properly. And guess what? I'm, and I can almost guarantee, not unless, I didn't ask him if, you know, sometimes you can just do the easy way out and just lay, <laughs> lay turf down, you know, and then just have a green grass. No, I don't think he did that. It takes time sometimes. And, and I want you to be okay with the, the period in between your planting and, you, and your growth because Sometimes we'll get frustrated and we say, God, I don't, I don't see it now. I, I'm still struggling now. I'm, I'm still dealing with the same things. I'm still struggling with the same sin. So I might as well just give up. I might as well just give in to the passions. I might as well just give in to the feelings. And, and I want you to know that, that 
Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Because sometimes growth takes a while. Uh, there, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, the, the plight of the, the bamboo tree. But, but here it knows that, that, that as you plant a bamboo tree, you'll plant it and you'll care for it for six months. Nothing. You continue to water it and care for it. A year later, nothing. Two years later, nothing. Well, well God, it's got to be three years later, you got, I, I got to see something. Nothing. Four years later, four years later, God, I've asked you for that husband. God, i asked ask you for that wife. I guess it's not going to happen. That bamboo tree for four years. So going on five years, they see nothing, no tree coming from the, the ground. But there's something about that fifth year in, in the life of the bamboo tree. After that fifth year, do you want to know what happened? No? You want to you know what happened, Chris? After that fifth year, that bamboo tree begins to grow. And it begins to grow faster than any other plant on this earth. Sometimes we got to give it some time. Watch the rate. This tree begins to grow one to one and a half inches every hour. For approximately thir- three to s- four months, this tree begins to grow at that rate. But it took, wi- it took a while. Because why? Because f- for those five years, it was planted, but then it began to grow Downward. The roots began to grow downward to to give stability to the plant. The roots, we learned about the roots last week. But it took five years. Who here is willing to wait five years? It's only been three years since I've been here. Five years to not see any growth. Not to see any, just God, just, we're, we're just the same where we are. Not to see it. But knowing God that I'm planted, I'm rooted, I'm growing downward. We learned about this last week. You've got to grow downward to grow upward. And then it happens like that, growth. Because the bamboo tree now is ready for healthy growth. That's why I want you to know that. that you may not have seen it thus far, but, but if you're attending to it the way that God has asked you to attend to it, growth is on the way. But like I said, because God doesn't want to see unhealthy growth. He wants to see healthy growth in our lives. But sometimes in the Bible, it talks about this idea of, of, of unhealthy growth. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 15, it talks about sometimes that how our hearts, hearts can sometimes grow dull. Write these scriptures down because I'm not going to read them right now, but I want you to go back and read them for yourselves. For those here in our online campus, Matthew 13, 15, our hearts can sometimes grow dull. Sometimes the love that we have can sometimes grow cold. Matthew 24, 12. He talks about in Galatians 6, 9 that sometimes there's a, there's a danger of us growing weary and well-doing. In Ephesians 4, 22, he talks about the possibility of growing corrupt according to deceitful lusts. That after a while, these lusts, if you allow them to grow within you, they'll definitely take you in the wrong direction. And watch this. It's a thing called cancer. And we understand what cancer is, really. When, when you look at cancer, cancer is just our body cells growing uncontrollably and spread into other parts or areas of the bio, body. That's what cancer is. While it's growing, it's an unhealthy growth. I want us to, to say, God, I, I, I want to see healthy growth in my life. I want, I want to see God moving in such a way that I, I know that I'm, I may not be ready to, to be an Ursha right now. But maybe in a year or two I can go out there and I can talk to Bernard, who's been Urshering for now two years, and say, listen, I, I, I want to help out. I want to serve in that way. Or saying, you know what, I'm really good with numbers. Maybe I, I can talk to someone because I feel my serving God's way, whether it be a, a trustee or, or saying, God, I, I, I'm going to seminary. I'm learning more about your word. I want to be an elder. I want 
to serve you, God. I, I want to help out with the youth. I want to I want to lead a life group. I want to teach a class. But it takes healthy growth to get to that point. We're going to read a chunk of scripture. It's a lot of it, but I want you to I want you to look at this. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Everyone goes to First First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three. I'm going to read verses one through eight and listen to this as we walk through this together. If it hurt, just say ouch. If you don't want nobody to know it's you, just say to be quiet. But this stepped on my toes as I was studying it. He says, dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, Paul talking, I couldn't talk to you as I would, watch this, as I would to spiritual people. He knew that they couldn't take what he had to say right then because they had not grown to the point of being spiritual. I had to talk as though you belong to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid foods, because you weren't ready for anything sm stronger. And guess what? And you still, I'm sorry, Kathy, you still ain't ready. She's an English teacher, so it hurts every time I say that. You still aren't ready. How hard and difficult is that for someone to hear today from God? You're striving. You got, God, I, I, I want to do that. But God is saying, you're not ready yet. But I've been to school. You're not ready yet. God, God I'm, I, I have the time. You're not ready yet. Why? Because, because if you step into it too soon, you very well may hurt somebody because you weren't ready. Say, I, I, got, the, I got the knowledge, but your temper's not there yet. I, I, I know what you're doing, but the passion and the love is not there yet. He says, you are still controlled by your sinful nature. He's saying that I am saved. These people he's writing to are believers. They're saved. But he recognizes that they are still sometimes controlled by their sinful natures. Don't, so don't think that because you're struggling with certain things that you're not a believer in Jesus Christ. Say, God, God, I struggle with this. Recognize it, give it to God, and say, God, I need you to handle it. Tell me what to do. Show me what to do. Show me what, watch this, not to do. Because we think that, 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 that when these things come upon us, we can still do the same old things. No. No, you can't. Sometimes you got you to gotta cancel that station. Sometimes you got to get that thing out the house. And I'm not talking about your spouse. <laughs> you guys know it. You, you, you guys got that bottle just in case. You know, just, I can, just in case I get, get to that point, I, I need to break it out. You know, I got that stash upstairs. I can just, I can roll it up just in case. You know, I, I, I need to get the, get the edge off, Isaiah. Sometimes I just got to take the edge off, Isaiah, you know. But what are you relying on in that moment? You're not relying on God. Because you physically are saying that this is the thing, this thing right here is more important than me growing closer, deeper to God. He says, you are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove that you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? When one of you says, I am a follower of Paul, and the other one says, I am a follower of Apollos, or I'm a follower of Pastor Larry, or I'm a follower of Stanley, or I'm a follower of Pastor Jeff, or I'm a follower of Pastor Daxon, or I'm a follower. Aren't you acting like the people of the world? After all, who is Apollos? Who's Paul? Who's Pastor Larry? Who's Pastor Daxon? Who's Pastor Daxon? No, we are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work that God gave us to do. Follow after Christ. Yes, you may take our lead, but I want you to follow after Christ. In verse 6, I planted the seed in your heart. And watch this. And Apollos watered it. But it was God who made it grow. 
King James said, it, it, God brings the increase. It's, it's not important on who's planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. It's God that's making you grow. Are you relying on God to grow you? Or are you relying on reading the Bible from page to page, end to end? And now, I got it. Nope. I know a lot of people who've read the Bible far many times than I have. But they're still not growing. The one who plants and the one who waters, verse 8, work together with the same purpose. And both will be rewarded for their hard work. Someone say planted and growing. The, the spiritual growth of our believers, I, I want you to understand that, that, that it's a decision that we make. And it, it's a hard one at times because our flesh is telling us one thing. Like I said, my daughters, my daughters got there. So, so if you didn't know, our, our kids, I think it was a week ago, Emily, they got their little dirt. Two, it's been two weeks now. Two weeks. So we're learning planting, and we wanted to let them see the physical part of planting. So Rebecca went out and got little things for the kids to hand out, and, and Donna gave it to the kids. Because as we're going through, I want you guys to go home, those parents to go home and, and ask the children, what, what did your plant do? Probably the boys didn't take care of them. The girls probably took care of them a lot better than the women did. But I couldn't make that assumption because I think we had some, like I, I was the plant taker carer. I know that's not right, Kathy, but that was me when I was growing up. I took care of the plants as we grow, grew up. But I wanted them to see the fact that they took an actual physical seed. They opened the ground. They put the seed in the dirt. They covered it. And they were given instructions. I wanted them to see it from themselves. And I want the parents to go home and, and talk a little bit about this idea of, of what, you, what, what are you seeing? What are the results are you seeing? One kid said, well, you know, my plan is not doing anything. And as a parent, are you saying, well, did, did you water it? No. Nah. Did you put it in the sun? No, nah, no, nah, it's been up in my closet. They need to share the fact that that's what our lives sometimes are like with Jesus as well. He wants you to take care of it. He wants you to water it. He wants you to place it into their life to see growth. Then the other one said, well, well what happened to your plant? Well, Daddy, my plant grew and I, cause, 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 cause I put water in it and I put it in the window. I even gave it a hot dog on Wednesday. You're not supposed to put hot dogs in the dirt. But, they, but she was trying because she wanted to see growth. The idea that, that that growth is a choice and about the decisions that we make. And the first thing I want you to know, we're going to go through these points. The first thing I want you to know that spiritual growth is a choice that's commanded by God. It's a cho choice that you make and a choice that I make and it's commanded by God. Ephesians 4.15, it says, instead, we will. Someone say will. It, 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 it's, it's saying that, that what, this is what you should do. We will speak the truth in love. We will be growing in every way more and more like my pastor. No. Like Christ. Who is the head of the body. The church. We will. God's saying you will be growing every day more and more like Christ. But it's a decision that you have to make. 2 Peter 3.18 says. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But grow. It's a choice. He's telling you to grow. But it's a decision, an active decision that you have to make. We're told to grow. And not just in the grace of our Lord, but also in the knowledge. Some only have the knowledge but don't have the grace. Some of us are very gracious but don't know the word attached to it for that grace. God is saying to put those th two things together. Those are the instructions, but are you willing to follow the instructions? Or you want to give your own instructions and hope for the best? Because God does rebuke us. He rebukes us in Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. He says, you have been believers so long. Watch this. Don't say ouch, just listen. You've been believers for so long now that you ought to be teaching others. How many life groups should we have here? Oh, my goodness. Don't say it. Don't say it. Instead, you need someone to teach you again and again and again and again and again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot feed and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk 
is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. But now, but now God is saying that you should be further along than this. You're not caring for what I've given you. You're not watering and not following the instructions. It's not a choice, an option. And it's not just reserved to the few select believers. It's, it's for everyone here, those watching on the online campus, those that are, 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 that are hundreds and thousands of miles away watching from the other side of the world. Because there are people watching us in Africa and India. I got an email from someone saying, thank you so much, Pastor Larry. But the idea that, that God commands this type of birth, this growth, not only does he command it, but spiritual growth is a choice that requires, watch this, diligent effort. If we do the right things, physical growth happens. If, if you eat and if you get the right rest, not unless there's some type of, watch this, not unless there's some type of uh, problem going on with that person's genes. But we can't, we can't just make the assumption that I'm older now, so I should be spiritually, more spiritually mature. I'm, 70, I'm 72 years old. Why haven't they asked me to be an elder yet? I'm, 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 I'm 80 years old, and they haven't invited me to be part of Life Cafe yet. I'm, I'm 55, and they haven't asked me to be a greeter. I haven't seen you smile once. <laughs> I haven't seen you be nice to anybody yet. This is supposed to hurt us right now. The, the, the fact that it's, it's called, what's it called, birthing pains? To birth this beautiful thing, this beautiful child, it takes pain sometimes. And sometimes it takes us not being upset at Pastor Larry, but saying, God, this word is supposed to cut me going in and heal me coming out. And, and, and I have to trust, I asked you if you trust me earlier, do you trust me that I'm going to share this with you because I love you? And I'm not trying to manipulate you and try to get something out of you. Because I, I can do that. I've been taught to preach. I went to seminary. I'm not a preach to a room. But I'd rather us grow and learn and, and get to where God wants you. I don't want to drag you along. I, I, want, you, I want you to be encouraged. I, I had someone come to me the other day and say, Pastor Larry, like I've, I've never been in, you know, I've never thought in true relationship with, with a pastor, and I'm new here, and, but I feel that connection, and, and I thank God. So now we're talking regularly in there. We're texting, and I'm encouraging this individual. But they came to me. I, I want to come to everybody out there. I want to learn everyone's name. But watch this. As we grow, I can't. And, and please, it, what, what they say, charts in my mind, not my heart. Like, if I can't remember your name, if I call you the wrong name, please say, Pastor Larry, no, that's not my name. My name is, I, I think, this your name's not Anthony, is it? What is your name, brother? Fred, Fred Davis. I knew the Davis part. I called him Anthony, he was walking and said, Anthony, Anthony. And I looked at, I looked at, <laughs> I looked at Andre, Andre's like, I don't think that's his name, Pastor Larry. <laughs> I said, you know what, I think it's right, because I called him from the stage the other day, and I said, I don't think that's his name either. I knew the Davis part. I was calling him Anthony Davis from the Lakers, and he is not Anthony Davis. Are you? You don't play for the Lakers, do you? No, okay. But to be okay. Growth is sometimes telling someone that, no, you got it wrong, but that's all right. It's growth. It's okay. Sometimes we're so, we're so opposed to any type of, 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 of confrontation that we'd rather let it not go unsaid. And you've been calling me, you've been calling me Keith for 20 years now. My name ain't Keith. Because it takes an effort, a diligent effort. John 6, 27 says, but don't be so concerned about the perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. Takes, takes diligence to say, God, I'm a, and, 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 and you know how it is. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a night person. So, so if I do get up, I, I'm usually doing a devotional. I'm, I, and I like my music in the morning. So I'll listen to my music just to be like, turn that thing down. I'm like, mm -mm, in the name of Jesus. And then at night, that's when I try to get my word. I, I love it. I, I love that. That's for me. But it took a while because when I first started doing it at night, 
I get to the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And then Bedside Baptist caught me, speaking in tongues. To say that I'm going to diligently and I'm going to search you with all of my energy. Know yourself. Because you know the enemy, that's what he does. The time when you open your Bible and say, I'm going to dig in here and I'm going to learn a little bit. I'm going to read a little something. Or I'm going to go back over the sermon that Pastor Larry preached. That's when that spirit of sleepiness comes upon you. But it's a diligent search. You're saying, God, I'm going to chase. I'm going to run after you. It says 2 Peter 1, 5 and 10. Is, in view of all this. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. In verse 10, so dear brothers and sisters, work hard. Someone say work hard. Work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. You know that you've been chosen by God. And, and when you know that you've been chosen, that's, it makes you feel good, doesn't it, Lauren? I mean, really, it doesn't make a difference what anybody else says. You, you know, growing up in Philadelphia, we played pickup ball. If you don't know what pickup ball is, that you went to the playground with your ball, and you could have your brand new jer jersey on your sneaks, but if you couldn't play ball, you wasn't picked first. But it felt good going out there, and they, and they knew that Larry was out there, and that I may not be the first pick, but I knew I possibly was that second pick. And it makes you feel good when someone picks you. We know that God picked you, and he chose you. He he sought after you and said, I want you. Me, God? Yeah, yeah I want you. But you, God, you know that I still struggle with pornography. I, yes, I want you. God, you know what? I, I, I've been touched. I've been abused as a kid. And I can't. Yes, I want you. You've been chosen by God. It's saying, God, I, I picked you. I sought after you. And I want you. Just the way you are. Just the way you are. We ain't, we ain't got to fix it up before we come to Jesus. Just the way you are. You've been chosen. And it's not easy. Because it takes work. But anything worth getting is worth working for. Anything worth getting. You think Jessica just got me? <laughs> I could use this because she's not in the sanctuary right now, Sister Christy. No, no, no. <laughs> use it. All right, all right. My degree. Okay, my degree. <laughs> it, it, it takes studying and learning and going to class and participating. It takes work. work. It's not easy. It's something that you're going to work on today, tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, and the day after. Thirdly, thirdly, spiritual growth is a choice. Now this makes me feel good. That's assisted by God. God helps us with our spiritual growth. Thank be to God. Because I, I couldn't do it by myself. Whenever we're alone, we're pressed, knowing that God desires to complete those things that he started within you should make you feel good. That should take you right to Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this very thing, the thing that God has started in you, that he who's begun a good work, someone say good work, he's begun a good work, not something bad. He said he works all things together for good. He that's begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus. What does that mean? That every day he's working on you. Every day he's walking with you. Every single day, God is strengthening you. He's building up that inner man, that inner woman, to say that, that I, you know what? I see the growth. And I understand that it's because of God that I'm even at this point right now. Because just last year, I would have slapped the taste out of your mouth. I, I know we don't have that here. That's, that's, at, that's at the other church down the road around the corner. And I nobody, nobody here had that type of anger issue growing up. Never. Barbara. But to say, last year I used to do something very different. I used to respond very different to this thing. And, and you know what, God? 
I understand. I see it. Y'all know I'm something's changing. Someone say growth. You're growing. You know, you know, last year if they told me that they needed people for VBS, I would just continue to walk past that list and went right to Dairy Queen on Sunday and went right to the mall. But for some reason I felt called to write my name on the list and tell Jonna that I wanted to serve. Someone say growth. There was a time that you couldn't tell me we're trying to leave the padded seats for, our, for, for, for those individuals that, that need the, the support. And, and I'm trying to be nice, Pastor Charlie, for, for those individuals that, that, that can use the padded seats. Amen? I should hear a big amen from my padded seat section. Amen? <laughs> but, but, but how dare you usher tell me to go to a blue chair? You know how much I tithe? You, do you know who I am? Last year, I used to respond that way, but now I say, okay, where do you want me seated? Okay, yes. Someone say growth. We're all growing. I want to be healthy growth. That inner man growth, that, that Ephesians 3, 16 and 17, be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted in what? Grounded in love. Being rooted and grounded in love. Verse 20. Now to him, and we love this part. Now to him is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ever ask and think. We like that part. But you got to be willing to grow. We want the abundance. <laughs> we, want, we want the big store. We want the big house. But are you willing to grow? All right, visual aid time. You ready? Let's go. God is changing you. He's working in you, and he's causing you to grow. But right now, can we zoom on this, Jared? How, how, how close can we get with that, get that, with that $15,000 camera, camera? <laughs> Some of us, that's, that's where we are right now. God is water. He's caring for it. He loves it. This is going to, guess what? We gave the kids, and we didn't even tell the parents. <laughs> this is going to be a sunflower. So get ready, Emily. Sunflowers are big. But this is where you are right now. Does, should I care less about this and more about this? This is nice. There's a lot of leaves on this. It looks pretty. I want to sit this in my office. I'm going to wait for this to grow a little more. Is that how we sometimes are? Not me. Mm -mm. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for my daughters not to look. If I'm taking their plants right to my office. And I'm showing everybody. Look, look what my babies grew. And that's what God is showing to you right now. That, that you think that you're, you're, you, don't, you don't mean anything because you're just beginning in your growth. And God is saying, I want to I share this. I want to share you with everyone that comes around me. Back in the day... At least for men, back in the day, it was called having your family picture in your wallet, Dan. My dad used to have that. And, you know, men used to carry wallets back in the day. For those that don't know, for the young lives that don't know, that was a piece of leather that you folded out. And you would insert a thing called money. Crypto? No money. You mean cash app? No. Physical dollar bills into. And then you would fold it back up. But in the center part, you had a picture spot. And you would put important pictures in it. And my father's had a picture of us, a picture of my mom, and he had a picture of each of me and my brother separate in his wallet. And what that meant to the people that he could show someone. Look at my family. The, 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 you, you want to know why I go to work every day on time and I'm, and, and, and I'm persistent and, and that, that I'm working hard. It's, it's, it's for this. And God is saying that, God, I want to show everyone that, look, th this is why I died on the cross. Th this, this is why I came to this earth, to, 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 to die and, and, and be buried because of, because of you. And because I knew the growth that you would have within you. That's why. I want to show it to everyone that I see. But, but, but we want to wait. We want to wait till we get to this, if we get to this. And God is saying, I, I want to show you all just the way that you are just the way that you are. I want to show you to everyone because I'm proud of you. There was a day that you, 
you know, think about coming to church on Sunday. I'm, now, I'm not downing the people that just are surviving, but I also want you to see the growth. There's some people that, that I came to church, I was a CEM or CME. And that's not AME, that's CME. That's on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Those are the only times that I used to go to church. Now, I may come late. Let's be honest. I may come late, but I'm there. Thank you for the growth. Now we're praying that you get here a little early because we got coffee here. We got little Danish is here. We have welcomers here. We got Beanie waiting at the door, ready to open the door for you. He was, he's at his post early today. Growth. Being rooted and grounded. Because God sends the power for that growth. Understanding that Christ is the true source for our spiritual growth helps you to see that that it's not dependent on you, it's dependent on him. And the closer I get to him, it's the way that growth happens. Listen, so, some of you right now are relying too much on you. Can I say that? You, you're relying on your knowledge, your information, what you can do. But God is saying, just get close to me. Just, 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 come, just, just come beside me. I'm going to show you. I'm going to strengthen you. I just need you right here. Don't shh, shh, shh. shh. I'm, be quiet. Stand still. I heard it. Who said it? And see the salvation of the Lord. Some of us are just always moving. I got to do this, God, and I got to help you here. And the, Okay, I'm a servant. God is saying, stand still. Get next to me and watch what I can do. And the last point is that our spiritual growth is a choice that is blessed by God. God is going to bless that spiritual. Anything that we experience in this side of glory, God is saying, I will bless it. As long as you're beside me, I want you to learn from it. What, did, what do you think Joseph learned from the pit? What do you think he learned from the prison? I think he learned a lot. But I think it all rolled into trusting God. Did he not scream in the pit? Well, you read the story. Yes, he did scream in it because later on in the story, you hear his brother saying that we heard this wailing from the pit when we threw our brother in it. So he was, he was physically sharing how he was hurt in the pit. But I'm believing that he learned something. When he was in the prison wrongfully accused by Potiphar's wife, he could have been very bitter, but he learned something when he was in the prison. God will bless you and keep you. I love that song, It Is Well With My Soul. Not saying that what I'm going through right now feels good or feels well, but I understand within me, in the inner man, it is well with my soul. It's well, God, whatever, what is, whatever you're trying to teach me in this moment, God, I want to learn it. Is it humility? I want to learn it, God. Is it about me seeing me? I want to learn it, God. Because we know sometimes we're our worst enemy. We live a Burger King life. We want it our way. Ain't nothing wrong. I don't like pickles. I don't like tomatoes. But if you give it to me, I'm not going to throw it. Didn't I say I want no pickles, no tomatoes? Gracefully take them off and I'm going to eat my burger. Your inner man is saying that, that this that came to me, I may not like it. I may not even wanted it that way. But God, you know what? I'm trying to learn something. You. I know you're going to bless it. I know you're going to do something well by it, God. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we have been right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place. Watch this. Of undeserved privilege. You don't deserve the privilege that you have. But some of us, we walk as far as that you deserve it. Yeah, I, I deserve to have this. No, you don't. But when you walk this way, it's a thing called humility that, that comes on your life. Where we now stand. And we, are, we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Who knows that at one point we are going to share God's glory on the, on the other side. But we're trying to get it here.
our spiritual growth. Submitting to God, getting closer to him assures us a thing was called an abundant life. Abundant life that's blessed and promised by God. John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. Uh, when, when God said that I was going to be leaving Philadelphia and coming to this area, I didn't know exactly where, but I prayed. And Jessica knows God gave me John 10.10. John 10. And, and this is before even coming to text to Life Community Church. And I wish I could find that thing. God had, had given me John 10.10. 10. And, uh, and what I thought I heard from him. And so who here is okay with saying that you, I thought I heard something from God, but I, I, I might have gotten it a little wrong. You look okay with that. Amen. I'm not the only one. Because I thought I heard him say true life. And I wrote in my Bible, true life. True life. Church. And he gave me this, for the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. I didn't know he meant Life Community Church. The life was in it. And he gave, he gave me this, this is 10, 10, 12 years ago. But it's a promise by God, and God said, I'm going to bless that promise. I'm going to bless that seed that you planted in the ground. I'm going to, I'm going to bless it, and I'm going to keep it. Our spiritual growth is a command by God. It requires diligent effort. It's assisted by God. But more importantly, it's blessed by God. So the question that I want you to go home with today, and I'm going to leave you on this, is are you experiencing healthy spiritual growth? This is one of the questions I want you to ask yourself right now. Are, 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 you, exper are, are you experiencing healthy? Someone say healthy. Healthy spiritual growth it's an introspective question I want you to ask yourself that because if you're not you see it and you can make a change so God I, I want a life that's that's vibrant that's kind that's that's filled with love and joy and peace spiritual life that 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 I understand that my spiritual watches your spiritual growth is it is essential to the body. You growing and getting to the place that God wants you is essential for you here at Life Community Church. We're growing. We're, we're looking for teachers and, and, and servants, ministry servants, and, and, and like I said, trustees and ushers and people that work in the tech and, and, and more than just Pastor Daxon and Jared playing the keyboards. They're on their way. Some of them are even here. Amen. They're already in the house. But just like that woman that had to sweep up her house to look for the coin, we're sweeping things up right now. We're getting things ready. Because you know when visitors come, you just don't, in my house. Listen, I've, I've, known, I've known my mother longer than any person on this earth. I spent intimate time connected to my mother. She knows me and I know, I know her. She know how I kept my room, Rebecca, when I lived with her. She wasn't the happiest with it, but she knew me. And although she knows me, guess what my wife does when my mother comes up? My wife makes me clean the house. Wonderful, thank you so much. <laughs> Because we know when, when, we're, when we're expecting people in, we, we straighten things up, and, and that's what God is doing with us right now. But you're needed. You're needed. There's a, there's a, once again, I, I hate to say it, there's a new usher here. There's a trustee here. There's another leader here. This week, I'm meeting with my leaders. Last week, I met with our first impressions team. This week, I'm meeting with our leaders because I want to share a few things with you of the vision that God is showing me. But, but there's some people right here, and I'm praying that God shows you. But watch this, even if he doesn't show you that my leaders, those people that are involved in other ministries, that they see it too and that they come to you. Because sometimes you don't see your self-worth. We like to feel welcome. We like to feel wanted. But do you know that you're needed? Do you know that you're needed? Being planted, being rooted, and, and growing is understanding that, God, I know that you need me as a part of the body. Ephesians 4 14 through 60, then 
We will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about with every wind of new teaching. Someone say new teaching. There's new teaching around right now that it says tickles our ears, makes us feel good inside, makes you feel good about staying in the pews and not serving. That's the type of teaching that you're going to get here. I'm going to encourage you to grow, to serve, to be a part of life groups. To Not only, we, I say this every time I come together with a group, it's going to be a worship, celebrating God for what he's done. There's going to be a word, you're giving something from the word of God. And lastly, there's a witness. Who have you identified as far as sharing Christ with? Every time. When I, meet, when I meet with our group, Bernard, because we, we can get off track. Last week, we had some meatballs. Oh, Jen sent us some meatballs. Oh, they were so good. And I just wanted to sit back and enjoy those meatballs. No, we got to get in the Word. All right, let's get in the Word. And then witnessing. Who are you witnessing to? That's growth. I, I don't want to tickle your ears. He says, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love. Watch this. Growing. Someone say growing. Growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body of the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own work, it helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. You being here is a key component of us learning and growing and being full of love. I pray that you, that you, that you have a passion to say, God, I want to grow. I don't want to be the same way that I was yesterday, today. I, I want to grow. I'm okay with a little conflict. I'm okay with sharing with somebody that you hurt me or, or that I hurt you and, and, and saying to that person, I'm sorry. Now let's get this thing back together and let's grow. But when you don't, you fester. And you become like stagnant water. And you know stagnant water stinks. Stagnant water infects all the other water around it. Stagnant water doesn't allow for, well, it allows for unhealthy growth, bacteria. So are you stagnant water, infecting the others around you, sharing just the negative things? You know, Pastor Larry, you know what he said to me last week? He walked past me, didn't even say hello. You know what? I'm, you need to watch out for him. Or maybe Pastor Larry was Concerned about the sermon he's about to preach, or concerned about the word that God had laid on his heart, or maybe he's just dealing with something that personally in my family. Are you stagnant water trying to infect the other waters, or are you looking for a healthy, positive growth? I'm not saying there's nothing negative about a certain pastor touching your heart. Pastor Dabson touched hearts, I touch hearts, Pastor Jeff touched hearts. But are you chasing and following after God first? Is that the person that you first to seek after? And not man. Because I'm going to get you upset. Mad, I'm going to make you mad sometimes, I think. But I'm going to do it in love. And as you chase after Christ, you understand I'm looking towards him. That's the one. That's my example that I'm following after. Grow. I want you to grow. Grow to say grow so you can go. Not leave here but so that you can go into your communities, go to your homes, go to your job to witness, to share. You being a, a witness to Jesus Christ doesn't always mean that you're going to have the Bible memorized from front to back as well I want you to, but it may be the life that you're living, that you're showing to that person in the cubicle right beside you when everybody's being laid off and you still have a smile on your face and they ask you, how can you still be smiling? And then you can say, because yeah, it, it, it hurts. And yes, I'm tired to find another job, but I trust my Savior, Jesus Christ. That's an open door to witness. Planted and growing. I, 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 once again, this is me. Whether you're Itty bitty stems just growing out the, out the dirt. 
or whether you're a plant growing, has been growing for years. I'm, I'm going to just share for me. It doesn't make a difference. I just want to see growth in your lives. And I'm not going to care any less for this as I focus on this. And I'm not going to care any less for this as I focus on that. I want to care for us all. Now, now, maybe this may ask for a little bit more attention. That's fine. But I'm not forgetting about this. Growing. What are those areas in your life that you need to grow? What are those areas in your life that you need to cut off like a cancerous growth to remove so that you can grow healthy? 